As you can see, the street is quiet today. Not much happening. To the east. Yeah, beautiful day. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, so it's quite nice sitting out here in the sun. I like to sit out here most mornings. In about half an hour or an hour's time, it'll be too hot. I like this time of the day. After about 8 o'clock, forget it, it's too busy out here. your board on that post and yesterday the garden railing fell down you can see it hanging down there and it's a shame because it'll cost a few bucks to, to fix all that and the, the big garage doors there rusting out at the bottom yeah it's not a bad looking house I don't know how many rooms are in it, three I think, including, not, not including the bathroom. I could contact her, I'd ask her how much she wants rent for it. The roof of this place leaks like a sieve in the place we're living. The roof has been repaired a number of times on the house that we're living in. I think it was built in the 80s, so it's bloody old. And the corrugated iron here is not as thick. It's almost like two sheets of aluminium foil stuck together. The gauge is not as thick as what I'm used to in Australia, or what we used to use on, on uh, garages and that where I did my apprenticeship. Garages and awnings and so forth. Definitely nowhere near a stick. Now the clouds are rolling in. Weather always comes from the east. Here. It's almost exactly opposite to where I used to live in Australia. The bad weather or the rain and so forth used to come from the uh, southwest. You had a storm rolling, storm clouds coming in from the southwest, duck and cover. Here it's east. I guess we're in the northern hemisphere, so just. So I guess that makes a difference. It's starting to get a little bit busy on the street now. People are waking up. That's what I like about early in the morning. You get the, the walkers, the joggers the dedicated uh, push bike riders you know, the kids going and sorry sorry still get their chips and lollies and candies and so forth yeah back to this house it's a nice looking house it's got a big veranda at the front it's got a lock up garage thing I guess you'd call it So I'm thinking about getting a, I've got the e-bike, and Leanne's got an e-bike. I'm thinking about getting a, uh, a motorcycle, petrol engine motorcycle. Because the only limitations on the e-bike is, like it's um, a 200 kilogram maximum weight limit. But the only limitation seems to be is you get to a steep hill, and there are a lot of steep hills around. But it has a bit of trouble. Pulling my weight and Mercy's weight up the hill. So, so that's why I'm thinking of getting that. The range is good, you know, like there's nowhere we need to go really that's outside of 80 kilometres. That's, that's a big range on an island. I know this is a big island. But 
it's not like we drive to the north end of the island every day. Yeah, it's not like we drive to the north end of the island every day. It's the hills. You know, there's a lot of places I'd like to go. Uh, there's a road we found that sort of goes around the outskirts of, um, through the hills and the mountains. I have done part of it. Um, I think it's on that video that we went to Paliwagan. Or Paliwagan. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. <coughs> I'd like to go all the way to Carmona. Um, but it's either way you're coming back up a long steep hill and by long I mean like three or four kilometers long and I think that would just be too much for the for the e-bike oh, he's an angry little dog you cranky shit get off my turf <laughs> moon dog's getting a bit a bit agitated little dogs are going past yeah so that's my thoughts I'd like to get um, it's just a uh, Yamaha YTX125 man yes I know all you big motorcycle riders in Australia you think oh 125 my goodness what are you going to do with a 125 that's all you need around here you know, this, uh, most of the time you can't do more than 40 45 kilometers an hour on on the main roads anyway because of the traffic 99% of the motorcycles and scooters are all 100cc, 110s, 150s, 125s. Um, the Kawasaki make a 175. Uh, too expensive there for what you get. <laughs> they want 73,000 pesos for the kickstart and 87,000 pesos for the electric start. Go figure. 15,000 k's more for electric start. Stick that in your jumper. Yeah, it's about 49,900 for this, so I'm going to uh, save up and get one of those. And then we will have the best of both worlds. We can have the e-bike. Ethan uses the e-bike too, so that's cool. There goes a Kawasaki 175. Yeah, so the the, y, the YTX 125, um, the uh, Honda TMX 150, and the Kawasaki Barako 175, they're mainly trike bikes. They stick a trike on the side and they're used for tricycle riders because they're a good fuel, fuel economic, um, robust, powerful engine. Require little maintenance, air cooled, of course. My rule of thumb is you start water cooling motorcycle engines and there's just too much that can go wrong. Air cooled. You know, if the, the engine's getting hot, well then the fins are blocked, aren't they? You got them. I used to ride a lot of dirt bikes. And the fins get blocked up with mud and shit. And you just get off and clean them out, bobs your uncle. That's my plan, and that'll give us a wider skirt, like if we want to, pardon me, ride out to uh, Daddy Edel's or Mummy Nets place, we can do that. The e-bike would just get there, because it's 78 kilometres, I think, but there's hills, like I said, there's hills. Yeah, good dog, good dog. Keep drinking my coffee because it gets cold. That was the Kawasaki Barako 175. Not only the fellow down the road, he's got the, the cleanest and nicest looking trike. He's had it for a couple of years. He's always cleaning it, washing it, polishing it. Oh, it's a beautiful looking trike. And it's a Honda. TMX 150. 
and they run at about 73.9 I think pesos and Hondas are good reliable engines um, I've never owned a Honda myself I've had mates that have, that have had Hondas the old um, XL 125s XL 250s CR 125s first learned to ride motorcycles on a Honda um, little Peewee 50 which was quite comical to look at because even back then when I was what nine I was bloody tall <coughs> no, excuse me just getting comfortable yeah even back then when I was uh, nine I was bloody tall for a nine-year-old Oop. Gonna get, gonna get our ass wiped here. Got a car coming, as you can see. So, uh, plenty of room, mate. Plenty of room. If you can't get through that gap, give your license back. If you've got one. <laughs> yeah, I first learned to ride on the Pee Wee 50, and they were uh, like automatic, one gear two gears, stop and go. <coughs> so, uh, that was what, that was the bug that bit me first with motorcycles. And, uh, I had a lot of mates with motorcycles. That particular mate who had the Pee Wee 50, he eventually bought a, um, it was a Honda, it was a road bike actually, it was a 100cc, I don't remember that the letter denomination of it. Um, this is back in the 70s. But it was an old road bike, unregistered of course, and it was just used as a bush basher. And I, my first bike was a Yamaha a DT175. That was the first one that my dad bought me. And I had that for, oh, I don't know, eight years. Just used to look after the chains and sprockets. And it was a two-stroke. Um, the oil pump gave out after a while so I just used to put premix in. Yeah, bypass the oil pump. Just premix my own fuel. Stick it in the tank. She'll be right mate. Yeah, and then I uh, progressed to road bikes when I got my license because at that stage I was still too young too young to have a license but then I got my license I got my car license first and in Australia your, your car license and your motorcycle license two completely separate things unlike here where you know, if you have a, a driver's license it's good for like a, a non-professional driver's license it's good for motorcycles and vehicles, cars. Yeah, when I got my license, I got my, I had my full license in the car, and then I got, uh, I bought a motorcycle. I bought a off my brother-in-law. It was a Kawasaki 500 triple, two-stroke road bike. Um, That's that Honda I was telling you about. Look how nice and clean that is. It's like two, three years old. Beautiful bike, beautiful trike. He really looks after it. Yeah, so anyway, I got the two stroke triple Kawasaki. <coughs> and um, they had two models they had this, the 500 and the 750. 750 was nicknamed the Widowmaker. Powerful son of a bitch it was. 750. I have ridden one, um, but I had the 500. It was probably a little bit small for me, height wise. But um, uh, I had that bike for about five years. Never any problems with it. It had a. <laughs> he put a racing fairing on it, you know, the old rounded bubble fairing at the front all that and it 
was painted um, metal dust green, like a British racing green, but metal, metal flake. Not a very nice paint job, but still, you know, it was cheap. I think it cost me about four hundred dollars back then. That was in the mid '80s, <coughs> and I never, never used to ride far, just to and from work, and that was about six mile each way. Yeah, that was a good bike, and then from there I progressed, um, sold that one. Got a XS 1100 Yamaha. That was a nice bike, and uh, I lent it. To, uh, gave it to my mate. He was a motorcycle mechanic, and asked him if he could fix the, the bearing in the, the front yoke. There was a bit of play in it because uh, he could get the parts cheap because he worked at a wreckers motorcycle wreckers. So he took it and he said, you use my bike to get to and from work. And he had the Z1300 six cylinder. Whew, man, that thing could stand up and go. <coughs> yes, but around here, you know, like in Australia, the big long open roads, straights and so forth, and no cars. You know, I used to ride it from Penrith to Richmond, which, which was about, 40 odd kilometers and on the road I used to go on it was mainly you know, dead straight for six kilometers then there'd be a you know, slight bend and then dead straight again for another four kilometers <coughs> so you can really wind up the bike but here a there's too much traffic B the road surfaces aren't that good uh, too many kids dogs cats pedestrians if you're going to go over 50 kilometres an hour, you're taking your life in your hands. You know, you're bound to take a spill. Sure, there are some roads when you get out, like on that road down south, out of Bullehound, there's a couple of long straights, and you could wind it out for maybe eight seconds. But yeah, the roads aren't wide enough or in good enough condition. And there's too much pedestrian traffic, i.e. dogs, cats, kids. All the cars coming past now. Yeah. And bully hunts starting to wake up. Um, yeah, so that's my plan. So it gives us a bit more of a wider scope that we can travel to. Because we're just sort of sticking to areas where there's... We're, st we're staying up on top of the range, basically. On the e-bike. I wasn't such a big fella and weigh you know, over a hundred kilograms. It wouldn't be so bad, put two little um, Filipinos on that. You've got a combined weight of about 80 kilos. Put me and Mercy, you've got a combined weight of about 150. That's the plan. I've also got to get that house finished in Zaporte. I need a door and associated hardware, two windows and associated hardware, um, hollow blocks and a toilet. The septic's already in. We need the hollow blocks for the bathroom wall. And then that'll at least make that house livable. Mercy was saying if we don't make the house livable, she could lose it, lose her rights to it. Some, I don't understand how it works, but anyway. It's got nothing to do with me, I'm a foreigner. I cannot own land in the Philippines. So not interested in that. <coughs> I can own condominium and so forth, but I don't want to live in a condominium. So we've got to get someone, got to get that finished to livable stage and someone living there so they can see that the property is actually being used. Yeah, so that's, that's the other thing that we've got to get done. I think it'll take, I don't know how much more money it'll take, probably another 50k. 
pesos. I don't know. We don't need to go all out with uh, paint and all that sort of stuff just yet. It just has to be lockable, lock-up stage. So once we've got a lock-up stage, somebody can move in there and they can paint it as they go. You know, as we can afford to get the paint, and, you know, do the rendering on the walls inside. You know, they can do that while they're living there. So hopefully my 13 AB will be approved. I won't have to piss off out of the country in March because that would be a real pain in the ass having to leave the country and come back. Yeah. So who knows what's going to happen after tomorrow. So that's the two most important jobs on the job list. Get, uh, get that bloody house finished and get a, a motorcycle. Um, Ethan and Ethan and Arthur can go and live in uh, the house in support, eh? That way somebody will be living there. Anyway, yeah, somebody's got to live there and it can, it can only be a relative and it's not to be rented. They're not to be renting, like you can't rent it out to a stranger, basically. It's just the, the rules they have. So we'll get that done. I'll transfer 50k to, to Mercy in a couple of days and we'll get that underway. Wait till after the bloody elections. Everything will go up then anyway. All the prices. So it won't matter. Well, I'm going to take my dog for another walk. So I'm going to love you and leave you. I'll catch you all next time. Thank you for watching. Be safe. Be happy. Keep smiling. Uru.